Let's get back to the Aston Thanks, by election and uh, pick over the remains there. What the result tells us, the Shadow Migrant Services Minister and member for La Trobe, that is in Melbourne, Jason Wood. He joins us now. Uh, you're one of only two seats. You represent around 11% of the state now. What is the message you take from this by election? I think we need to change our strategy when it comes to um, campaigning, number one. Um, the party needs to change too when it comes to pre-selection of candidates. And can I say Rashina Campbell was an absolutely outstanding, fabulous candidate. Uh, the only issue was she was not a local um, person. Labor exploited that sensationally uh, well. Um, and that was one of the big differences between um, the Liberal Party's approach. We never mentioned uh, Mary Doyle wasn't a local um, either. Um, Peter Dutton just got relentlessly attack every polling booth had the most negative posters of, of Peter everywhere and then you had mm. these flashing nice posters of of Albanese um so and, and I go back to my in my electoral Latrobe I've had a swing to me in the last two elections and I, I strongly backed the lead in 2019 when Labor went after me very strongly because I voted for, for Peter Dutton the leadership challenge they put posters up Jason would Voted for Peter Dutton. Instead, I went out there and promoted Peter Dutton. Jason Wood, Peter Dutton, strong on crime. That's what the party needs to do. Needs to change its campaign um, strategy. And also, too, can I say, Alan Tudge was a very popular local member, and incumbency means a lot. So we mm. started right off the back foot, and obviously Albanese is in the honeymoon um, period. So it was very hard to cut through. Do you think? Alan Tudge quitting just 10 months from a general election put you in a really bad spot? Well, initially at the time, I didn't think it, it, it did because obviously, they, sadly for Alan, they ran a very negative campaign and a wrong campaign, an unfair campaign against him. But going around, and, and I used to have part of um, Aston in my lecture a number of years ago, places like Baronia and up at Fertry Gully. Mm. When you visited the football clubs, etc., cetera, uh, the first thing I'd say, oh, we're going to miss Alan, Alan Tudge. So he had a very strong following uh, there. So uh, that hurt. Uh, there's no two ways about that. I, I take your point about the the uh, negative campaign. Um, sure, they were running hard on uh, Peter Dutton's time as health minister. I don't think that was counted very well by the Liberal it Party. It wasn't counted at all. No, yeah. it wasn't counted at all. Is that your view? But, but, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it wasn't but Jason, counted. Jason, these things don't happen in a vacuum. They don't get traction in a vacuum. You talk about... Um, what you need to do with campaigning. But what about policy? What does the Liberal Party in 2023 actually stand for? What hope are you giving millennials and younger people? What does their future well, look well, like? Well, this is a... You, you raise a good... You, you raise a fair and valid point. Uh, number one, when it comes to policies, it's it's not up for the opposition to go out and announce the policies probably two years out from the election. Why not? Election where we're, Why not? No, because, it's, because it's not the way to do it. Can I just talk about one issue, though, which wasn't touched on? And this is something which I'm very passionate about and something Peter Dutton is very passionate about, and that's the character test. And this is where we should have been promoting the great work Peter Dutton has done, making Australians safe, where people have been on visas under the character test over 6,000 he deported during his time. Now, we have twice in the Senate Labor blocked the legislation to change it from time served to 12 months to actually crime committed for people committing armed robbery, sexual assaults, um, even family violence. And we've got a very strong record on this, which those are the sort of issues we should be promoting. That's a policy I'm very um, passionate about and you put yeah, it out. Sure. It's like but, but, but Jason, too. to be fair, they're not exactly hopeful policies. Um, you know, that kind of feeds into this narrative that you're, you know, it's, it's more of a negative, on the negative side. You're not really using that. That's not a good example of a policy that you can well, present to the electorate well, Laura, and I, say... I, dis I, I disagree, Laura. I've had... Oh, okay, in my last, no, 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 the reason is I can say this because I've had two campaigns in the row, 2019 yep. and, and 22, I'd swing towards me, mm. backing what the coalition did when it came to, for example, um, infrastructure and delivery. So that's the policy, uh, infrastructure when it comes to um, car parks. I know the Labor Party hated it, but it, in my lecture of, of Berwick, you actually see the state late, Labor members going out and promoting those. So yeah. what we have to do, first of all, is demonstrate 
Well, if you vote Liberal, what are you going to get? And this is what we're very big on when it comes to jobs and, and uh, investment and those sort of things. And we, we, just remember this too. Every time we have, um, when Labor has uh, gets attacked, for example, on sovereign borders, and then Andrew Giles out there a number of years ago um, in his uh, Labor State um, conference talking about how he's strongly opposed to turnbacks. Mm -hmm. Now he's the immigration minister and supports that. Labor, at the same time when it comes to AUKUS, they now fully support that. So Labor's very good when they realise public is going one direction to go in that. And that's the same thing we should be doing yeah. too. OK, uh, fair enough. And look, you're, you've won a couple of elections and, as you point out, won a, a swing to you. So what you're doing on the ground in your seat of La Trobe is, is obviously working. But broadly, as a party, it's not. And the two examples you've given me this morning are kind of retrospective. It tells me Absolutely. that you're, you're waiting for the Labor Party to stuff up in these areas. But where is your big vision? What do you want Australia to be? Where are these big nation-building policy ideas? Well, the, obviously, the other one we've put on the table when it comes to climate change. And can I say, back in the day when John Howard was Prime Minister, I actually stood up in the, the party room and talked about Al Gore and we need to do something about um, climate change. I must mm. admit, it wasn't the most um, popular speech at, at the time. But they're the sort of things I realised back then we need to be doing something about. And for the, probably we look at the modern Liberal Party, and mm. this has been raised before when it comes to the nuclear energy. I yeah. think that's something uh, which, which we're, Peter Dutton has put out there. And I think you'll find even viewers in, on um, Sky and elsewhere, and I know in, in Higgins and, and probably Goldstein, mm. uh, those are the sort of thing debates we should be having on as a nation. And, uh, and obviously this is something... I think the Liberal Party um, can actually put forward which Labor strongly opposes. And it's ironic that on one hand, Labor does not want to have a debate about nuclear energy, but now they fully support having nuclear-powered submarines. OK, well, let's ask you one uh, question because we've been talking about The Voice for uh, years, yep. months. It has certainly intensified in the last couple of weeks. Um, Andrew Clonell was just on this program reporting that there is a party room meeting on Wednesday. You're going to finalise your position on that. What is your view on The Voice? What should the party do? Well, initially, I was very supportive of The Voice um, concept. The only thing which um, started getting me concerned is when you had Albanese bring out Shaquille O'Neal as promoting this, and I realised it was very becoming very political, very... Um, Quickly, I think Labor's gone about this totally wrong attacking Peter Dutton and, and especially someone like Julian Less, who's been um, very supportive when it comes to having the debate on this. Um, I would prefer we go to a constant vote in the party room, allowing members to have their choice. My personal view, and I've put out a survey to the, the electorate, I'll go along with them. Um, so it was initially an email survey with 90 of people against it. Middly, that's the Liberal sort of base. Yeah, right. I'll, I'll so can I just clarify on that? In your yep. electorate of Latrobe, you put this out to your voters. You want there to be a conscience vote on the on the basically the Labor model. Yeah, ba basically. So I've already, I've already done this. I've already put. I'm going to say this. It's my it's my email list. So obviously they're going to be more much more Liberal inclined people. We had like I think three thousand surveys come back. So we've got one hundred and ten thousand votes. So it's only very very small. But initially, with, with no detail, it was, was 90% uh, against. Then with detail, it's 60% um, uh, against. OK. But in saying that, too, my, my personal view, did the same with the same-sex marriage, would be to put out a wider survey. This is what I, I personally like to do. You're asking me what my position would be, to hear what my constituents overall would like me to do. I, I prefer a conscience vote. That's my personal view. But at um, the same time, too, I think Labor... Uh, is really tried to do everything in Albanese to push the Liberals and party in the in the position where a lot of members um, would obviously be more aligned to um, oppose it rather than support. Jason Woods, thanks so much for that. Really appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Take care.